Bacteria come in many forms, good and bad, life-sustaining and life-threatening. Experts say they can divide and mutate every 20 minutes. So when it comes to developing resistance to antibiotics, bacteria move quickly. But one of the main reasons why antibiotic resistance has progressed so rapidly actually has nothing to do with nature and everything to do with humans. For years, the misuse and overprescription of antibiotics has helped lead us to this point. If you have a virus, like the common cold or a sore throat, you don't need antibiotics. They won't work, and taking them only helps develop resistance. Among antibiotic-resistant bugs are certain strains of tuberculosis and an infection called MRSA, or MRSA. You've probably heard of this, but you might not realize just how common it is. MRSA doesn't discriminate by age, gender, wealth, or race, and even the healthiest among us are vulnerable. When you were playing football, I mean, that, now that you look back on it, any, any regrets at all? Any, no. Anything you would have rather done? No, absolutely not. I'd do it all again. Even everything that I went through um, and everything that I'm probably still going to go through uh, in a heartbeat. Brandon Noble fell in love with the game of American football when he was just four years old. He dedicated his life to the sport, playing in middle school, then high school, and on to Penn State University one of the best-known college football programs in the United States. All of them steps to Brandon's ultimate goal, to play in the National Football League. You know, I got released, I went and played in the NFL Europe, I came back, I got released, I played in the NFL Europe, and I went to Dallas. Every time there was a cut made, I was sure that I was getting cut. You know, when they were releasing guys, and I just remember sitting in my locker uh, on the final cut day, and I'd never made it that far. You know, and I remember one of the guys on the training staff coming out and saying, you're good, man. You made it. And just the, the relief was incredible. A dream realized. Brandon Noble was in the NFL, a Dallas Cowboy, a professional football player. He would have four successful seasons in Dallas before moving to Washington, D.C. to join the Redskins in 2003. It was there that an operation following several knee injuries threatened much more than his career. You're a football player and you're, you build yourself up to be kind of invincible, and right. And next thing I know, I'm in the hospital for this MRSA thing. It, it's it's scary. I mean, it's it does scare you because it's something you know nothing about, never heard of it, and the doctor's sitting here going, you know, you're in trouble. Brandon had noticed a red spot develop over the site where doctors had scoped his knee. It began small, about the size of a quarter, but the redness quickly spread up his leg and so did the pain. As his daughter's two-year-old birthday party continued in their family home, Brandon was rushed to the hospital. And at that point, it was like it had covered most of my leg. You know, my leg was a huge, just red, swollen mess, and the pain was unbelievable. And um, the doctor, the infectious disease doctor, came down and told my parents, if they'd have waited another 24 hours, they'd have either potentially had to amputate my leg or it would have taken my life. I mean, that's kind of where we were getting. Brandon had methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, better known as MRSA, or MRSA. The key word here, resistant. Not easily treated with first-line antibiotics, or sometimes not able to be treated at all. The CDC says in the United States, about 11,000 people die from MRSA every year, and more than 2 million people get infections with bacteria that are resistant to drugs. You know, here in the United States, I think, um, you know, we've come, become accustomed to believing that there's medicines to treat w what ails us. At some point, you were told, we really don't have a medication here. Absolutely. W what was your that, emotional reaction to that? Was it, was it frustration, anger, despair? I think it's, it's a bit of, you get, it's scared. I mean, that's the best way to, to you know, what's going to happen. You know, I'm, I've got kids, I've, I've, I'm a, you know, a week ago, I was a professional football player. And now I'm laying here in a hospital going, what's going to happen? You know, somebody just talked about cutting my leg off and there was the, the mention, you know, death. For three months, doctors flooded Brandon's body with a cocktail of strong antibiotics that killed not only bad bacteria, but good bacteria. A lot of it was just the, the exhaustion. I mean, you just didn't want, I didn't want to do anything. Again, I went from being a professional athlete at the top of my game and the top of my, you know, my chosen profession and to not wanting to get out of the, the recliner ever. And I just wanted to lay there. I mean, you just, 
it's like being sick for a long, long time. I mean, the drugs, they're helping you, but like you said, they're, they're also killing the good stuff inside you. A long process made even longer when Brandon got MRSA again in the other knee a year later. In addition to another round of treatment, he was also getting tested to make sure he wasn't a carrier of the superbug. At this point, he had a wife and three young children at home, including a newborn son. It would be nearly two years of treatment and testing before he finally got the all clear. But while he had a clean bill of health, his football career was over. People think sometimes it's the very young, the very old, people who are already sick that are, that are going to get this. I mean, you, I mean you're, you're, you are the opposite of that. Absolutely. I was at my prime. I mean, I was, you know, 28, I was 30 years old. I, I'm a professional football player. I was in great shape. I mean, uh, and it, it, it laid me down, man. It ended my career. In 2004, several of Brandon's teammates in Washington also contracted MRSA. But no one had it as severely as he did. And to this day, a decade later, he still doesn't know where the infection came from. Did, did you get MRSA because of some sort of mistake, or I mean, w w why, why you? <laughs> that, that I have no idea. I mean, that, that's, I think, the scariest thing about MRSA and the most frustrating thing about the situation is I don't know where I got it. I was in two places where you can get it, right? I was in a hospital. I was in an OR. I was also in a football locker room and training room. I don't know why I got it, you know, but I, I think that it was... It was one of those things that for me, you know, I look at the journey and, and it, it's made me who I am today. The emotional part of this for you, I mean, physically you're, you're doing okay, but, but emotionally, do you, do you still worry you're going to get this again? I've gotten a little weird about things. Like I've never been, I'm not a germaphobe at all, but you know, there are things that really bother me now that never would have, like cooking, like work, like, and it's completely, you know, it doesn't make sense, but it's just like eggs. Like, if I'm making eggs in the morning, man, I, every time an egg touches my hand, I'm in the sink. Does it surprise you that there aren't more antibiotics out there to try and treat these diseases? Absolutely. We are running out. And I think that that's something that people don't understand. They don't understand that there are things that, that we're running out of ways to treat. But somebody's got to figure out a way to fix this because it's not going to go away. It's going to keep changing. And, and if it keeps, you've got to stay ahead of it. You know, and if you don't stay ahead of it, then you're going to lose people to it. Back in the Norwegian Arctic, that's exactly what the team is trying to do. Staying ahead of it means starting now. And it will take a truly global effort to solve this global problem.